I'm, I hope you had a chance to see some of the other plays. This, this one's almost over. I can't quite believe it. Seems like we just got started with these folks. So um, thank you for being here and for supporting uh, all the work that we're doing towards supporting new plays. Uh, I need to say a few other thank yous before we get started. I want to say thank you to Nashville Arts for their support for some media. I also want to say thank you to the National Endowment for the Arts who started supporting this project this year, as well they should. Yeah, <laughs> And then, of course, I want to say a big hello and welcome and thank you to HowlRound TV. And, um, and a big thank you to National Public Television, our wonderful roomies who are helping us make that possible. And then last but not least, of course, is the woman uh, who puts her money where her heart is. She loves and believes passionately in the importance of new works. And so she helped us get this whole project started. A big thank you to Martha Ingram. Check your cell phones while we're in this process here. Just make sure they're nice and silent. Um, you know, or just turn them off. Mm -hmm. Like you're not gonna no take way. a call while you're listening to this fabulous play, right? Or you know, play Angry Birds or something. So don't do that. <laughs> All right. So, um, uh, so the Ingram New Work Works Project has three parts. It's a lab, a fellowship, and this festival. The lab is a season-long commitment that we make to four playwrights. Um, they apply to be a part of the lab, and part of that application process is uh, they get to pitch an idea of a play they're dying to write. So when uh, playwrights come and start to work with us, they, they, it's not like a play that's been written at all yet. It's an idea. We're midwifing from just what is it that you think you'd like to start with, and, um, and sometimes things change, but it doesn't matter. We believe in the playwright, and that's the point. We're, I, we're looking to identify the playwrights that we think are, are really going to uh, go somewhere and do things, and have already done things, but we'll, uh, we want to get them to the next step. So uh, I want to acknowledge our four playwrights that are members of the lab this year. A big hello to Kyle John Schmidt. He's sitting right over there. <laughs> this year to have as our fellow uh, the wonderful Rebecca Gilman. She was with us earlier. She had a great play, Roland, and so I'm sorry if you missed her reading. It's too late, you miss it. But she was really, really fun and wonderful, and we were really, really honored to have her with us. And then, of course, the festival itself. This is where we get to showcase the four playwrights coming out of the lab, as well as the uh, fellowship play. And at this point, you come into the process. Your presence here is actually very important to what we're trying to help the playwrights learn about their, their play. So thank you for being here. Your response to the play uh, educates them about what's working and landing for what they're writing. And then after the reading, uh, we will actually have a little bit of a talk back. So I hope that you will join us and have a little chat about this play. Um, this play does not have an intermission, so don't be waiting for it. Yes, I need to say that more often. And, and, uh, and, and but uh, there's there's refreshments in the back for a buck if you do end up and just you just can't stand it and you have to run go get a, a bottle of water or something or an M and M. I want you to know that supports our professional uh, internship program, all the concession. All right, I think I should shut up and let you hear this play. Uh, sit back, relax, and listen to, uh, and the name of the play is <laughs> <It's> about you. <laughs> Sunrise. 
Red light begins filtering in through the floor to ceiling windows of the large, sparsely furnished apartment at the top floor of a th three story stucco building in Canal in Key Largo, Florida. You are in the main room of this apartment with its white tile floors and white walls and windows all over. There are sliding glass doors that lead to a terrace overlooking a row of Spanish tile rooftops across the canal. There are floor to ceiling windows along that entire wall. There is an open kitchen with island. There is a white sectional couch. There is a large nautical telescope. Also, there's a door that leads to his bedroom and another door just up from that door leading to the room where he keeps his weights and other assorted junk he never uses. There is also a door to a small bathroom just down from the kitchen area. He's there. This is his apartment. You're there with him. You're both in your late 20s, staring down the barrel to 30, but not there yet. He is attracted by the standards of our time as they concern young men, which is to say that he is probably, <coughs> objectively, fairly average looking. You think you're ugly. Also, you have some odd bruising on your forearms, maybe some scraps and scratches, scrapes and scratches, nothing too ghastly, but noticeable. You sit bouncing a blue handball against the side of the kitchen counter as you talk. Nearby, the front sliding doors, a small packed duffel bag and backpack. It's time to dead that bitch. How can someone be so wonderful and loving one minute and so totally awful the next? That's who she is. All I wanted was a little sympathy, a little sweetness, you know? Barking up the wrong tree, dude. Well, she was fine, though, and, and then she just turned on me. Tell me what she said. Well, she was just, she was just mean about it. Like, I hadn't even put my bags down, and she's all, this is why we can't be together. And I, I was like, someone just died at my job. Why can't you be supportive? And she goes, I would be more supportive if you made better choices. And, and I was like, I have wanted this job since I was eight. And then she says, grow up. Like, like, like are you serious? I'm the youngest person to have ever had this job. The only version of this job in the world. Yeah, she's the fucking worst. The literal worst. Manipulative and evil fucking nuts. Dude. What? I know you don't like her. <laughs> don't like her. But that's a really not nice way and to talk should, about too. people. Because she's not a nice people. You know it's person, right? Yes, ass. <laughs> you bounce the ball. The thing is... No. Uh, no, dude, just let me... There's just... nothing else to say about it. You know this as well as I do. In three days, she's going to call me and apologize. And this time, you're going to tell her to jump off a fucking bridge. That's not funny. She has suicidal ideations all the time. But it's not your problem anymore. She, she's still a human being. So then just tell her to get lost. Tell her you've moved on. I haven't. Maybe by then you will have. In three days? Maybe it won't be three days. Maybe she'll call in three weeks or six months. Are you going to sit on your hands and twiddle your thumbs for six months? How am I twiddling my thumbs if I'm sitting you? on my hands? <laughs> Stop evading. Answer the question. No. Good. But how do I know she won't change her mind in like a week or a month? You don't. So what am I supposed to do? You change your mind. That's not realistic. Pack that shit in a box. Stick it in the closet. Can you do that? Anyone can. More bouncing. Hmm. We've been together for almost two years. Have you, though? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, how much of that time have you even spent living in the same place? Well, if you're with someone, you're with them regardless of geography. Bullshit. Physical proximity is key. Well, how do you explain online relationships? I don't. They're not real. You throw the ball. He catches it. He throws <coughs> the ball. You catch it. And on and on. You see flat bottom while I was gone? I got no interest in that guy. Good. He's dumb. Super dumb. And he hates me. <coughs> so? I'm just saying you can do better. <laughs> oh, yeah. My options down here are endless. Don't go off and find yourself a boyfriend right now. I couldn't handle it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't see that happening. Well, then what, right? Yeah, right. Then what happens? You'd be all, like, busy with the boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> and what'll you do? Drown myself, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you say that? Don't say that kind of shit It's a joke, me. dude. Calm down. Every joke is 70% true. Oh, is that a fact? <laughs> yeah, it's mathematically proven. This is what they teach you in community college. Yeah, that and basket weaving. <laughs> you staying here tonight? I don't have to. You need to. Is that okay? Of course. I, as soon as I can get that fucker on the phone. Dude, it's, it's fine. I like having you here. I can start throwing you money towards rent. Totally unnecessary. Is it though? I feel, I mean, I feel like I'm basically living we'll here. We'll figure it out. You throw the ball, he catches it. He throws it and gets up. <sighs> oh, 
Fuck. What? I hate her. Good. It's not good. I'm better than this. Yeah, but you can't really totally break up with someone until you get to that place where you just like really and truly hate them. He motions for you to throw them him the ball. You do. He holds it. Maybe tosses it up and down a couple times. Throws it at the wall. Catches it. He throws the ball at the wall repeatedly, catching it himself every time. You want to go to Key West this weekend? Key West? Yeah, sure. Probably could get a halfway decent room at the Southern Cross for not too much. I'm supposed to go back down to Marathon. They asked you back? They did. That's great, dude. I mean, it's not a big deal. Well, it's a super big deal. They do real research there. But they're not inviting me down to do research. Well, not yet. I'll reschedule. No, you won't. I won't let you do that. So why don't you come down with me? You don't need me tagging along. Well, can't. We can camp. It'll be fun. Yeah, I should probably stay here. Been gone too much as it is. So maybe next weekend? Yeah, sure, maybe. OK. I'm hungry. You hungry? Sure. What do you got? I don't know. I haven't looked. You get up and go to the fridge. I don't think there's anything in there. There's a bunch of shit in here. You don't even know what you have. Uh, I'm hopeless. Seriously, you die without me. <laughs> you start taking pans out of cabinets. You know your way around this kitchen. Hey. I know. You turn away from him and smile. You turn back to say something to him. But he's already gone. In fact, the entire apartment has disappeared. At the back of his face, a massive tank full of blue water. A dolphin swims up to the tank and looks at you. He's a pretty fucked up fish. <laughs> Covered in scars, maybe missing a chunk of flipper here and there. You regard each other. Lights shift. About a week later, the sanctuary, a swim with dolphins facility that was built in the 1960s and never updated. It has all the charm of a dilapidated high school nat natatorium and similar acoustics, similar play of lights in the walls. You are with Uncle Bo. Uncle Bo is butch, a little trashy, full of personality. She smoked for as long as you've known her, and she never wears sunscreen. It's late at night, after closing. We got a big group this weekend. I'll work overtime during the week. How's that help me with a big group? How big is it? Nine 12 year old girls and three adult chaperones. And how many working? Four, including you. What about you? What about me? Does that count include you also? When's the last time you saw me in a wetsuit? I'm asking for one weekend off. I gave you last weekend off. I was never supposed to work last weekend. Why do you need all these weekends free? I got shit to do. What kind of shit? Laundry, <laughs> grocery shopping, house cleaning. Just because that trailer's a double wide don't mean you need two days to clean it. Power's been wonky, so I've been slow. You need me to call that fucker for him? Don't bother yourself. I don't it. mind. He owes me a favor or five. I'm good. So that's what you were doing last weekend? Vacuuming without electricity. That and other life stuff. Not career stuff. What career? Your new career as a marine biologist with all those well-intentioned commies down at the research center. <laughs> I've lost the plot. I know you've been going down to Marathon behind my back like a little bitch. <laughs> OK, I went down there twice on my off time. Uncle Bo strolls. As she does, she twists a chin hair. She does this often, and it really bothers you. Uh-huh. Some rule against that? Depends on why you went. They invited me. Just out of the blue? No, I sent them an email. About? The dolphin swims by, taps on the glass. You wave at him to get away. He squeaks at you. You turn to him. Stop it. You don't talk to nobody outside of this facility about our animals. I didn't. Why are you lying to me all of a sudden? I'm sure I've lied to you in the past. Oh, have you? <laughs> no, of course not. So why are you starting now? All they did was give me some ideas for rehab. There is no rehab for that cracker fish. So then why keep him around? That's a very good question. Might be time to cut my losses. No, no, don't. He's not as bad off as you think. You've been here for what, two years now? Almost. When I hired you, what did I ask for? A copy of my scuba cert. 
I ask you for a statement of your research interests. No. I ask for a transcript from your graduate program in marine science. None of the other girls went to a graduate program in marine science. I know that. So why is that important? It's not. This is a place where tourists come to swim with dolphins. I hire veterinarians and girls who like dolphins. <laughs> so? So which one are you? You want to be something different? No. Then why are you angling for another weekend off? I thought I might take a little vacation. That's all. <laughs> you got to find somebody to swap with you. You know that's not happening. Maybe if you started coming out with us again, the girls would be more apt to do you favors. So it's on me then? It's on everyone. That's what it means to be part of a team. Isn't loyalty also what it means to be on a team? But of course. So why would I want to be on a team when they're obviously disloyal? Who's being disloyal to you? Somebody ratted me out. And nobody on staff told me anything. Your friend Cousteau gave you away. Don't call him that. Does he not run the underwater house? It's a habitat. I know exactly what it is. So maybe don't call it a house. People don't live down there? No, they stay down there for extended periods of time. Shh, semantics. No, it's not. People go down there. Scientists and sleep go in down bunk there. Beds NASA and microwave astronauts go in down the morning, there. And pee in a toilet and die in the grave. And sometimes also those people don't come back up. One time, somebody didn't come back up. It's just that, that friend of yours likes to talk a lot about this book he wrote, this book he wrote on safety. It's not a literal book. Oh, you don't say. <laughs> Shit, I must be as stupid as he thinks I am. He doesn't think you're stupid. Yeah, he better not. And he sort of did actually write a book on safety. Oh, I guess that poor bastard who drowned over there hadn't had a chance to read it. He was crew, not a researcher. What does that matter? Accidents happen at work all the time. <laughs> I thought you were dating my cousin. No, I was never dating your cousin. Well, why you guys say it like that? Because I don't want anyone thinking it's true. Stop dating my cousin. Oh my God, we never dated. And pub trivia is only fun when you're drinking. Yeah, what's that all about? Health. <laughs> you don't look no healthier. It's an internal kind of health. In fact, you look less healthy now than you did when you were out with us every night. I was never out every night. Why are you night? all banged up? I just bruise easy. It's an iron deficiency. Mm. Well, maybe you should say somebody about that. <laughs> it's a genetic thing. I take a supplement. Supplement's not enough. You gotta eat right. I do eat right. I'm talking leafy greens, proteins, mm. legumes. Yeah, I get all that. <laughs> all right. Uncle Bo starts to head out. So this weekend... Get your ass covered or get your ass to work. Come on! And no more messing with this fucked up fish. You leave his ass to me. That understood? Fine. You say you understand me. I understand. Me. Yeah. I get you. She leaves. You turn and face the tank. You walk up to it. You tap on it three times. After a moment, the dolphin swims up to the glass. Why you gotta do me like that? He taps on the glass three times with his nose. You heard her. You grab a beach ball. Oh, you want this? The dolphin squeaks at you. You think you can keep your mouth shut this time? Lights. The apartment, later that night. He's standing behind the telescope. There are a few new things in the apartment. Your things. Books and clothes and also a very well-loved stuffed dolphin that we will call Squishy because that is its name. You're throwing the ball against the wall. We're on the Marine Advisory Council together. That doesn't mean you have to talk to her. She's got the balls to come and be about safety when I wrote the fucking book on safety and her dolphins are like eating the tanks. One dolphin is eating one tank. If she's gonna get in my face, I'm gonna get back, into, back, and back get right back into hers, dude. Perception matters. In that room? Those guys in that room all wanted my job. They've been looking for any reason to take it away from me. Do they have one? No. So what's the problem? They want me to resign. Why? Symbolic admission of failure in leadership and communication. You didn't kill him. I know that. You know that. So what the fuck? Why are you yelling at me? I'm not. You have a very loud voice. Sometimes I don't think you know how loud you are. Sorry. It's fine. Just take it down a notch. He requests the ball. You give it to him. I guess 
I just don't understand how you failed. I didn't. Our shitty old equipment did. So tell them that. Dude, they can't do anything to me. The family settled last week, so there's no lawsuit. A. B. There's a reason the university hired me and not those numbskulls. And C. They wouldn't accept my resignation even if I gave it to them, which I have no intention of doing. So your boss and her cronies can bitch and moan all they want about how much of an asshole they think I am, but I'm going to bring this place into the 21st century regardless of what anyone has to say about it. They don't think you're an asshole. Of course they do. Everyone always thinks I'm an asshole. I don't. <laughs> you're not threatened by me. Doesn't that bother you? You're not threatened by me? No, I kind of like it. That they think you're an asshole. No, I, I came here to do a job. Yeah, and if they take that job away... Dude! You, 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 <laughs> everything is going to be fine. Promise me. I promise. You promise, you promise? There is literally nothing for you to worry about, okay? Okay. Sorry I got you into trouble. Really? You're just not allowed to go down there anymore or do any more work with the fish? Do you want to give nine-year-olds dorsal fin rides for the rest of your life? No. That woman does not have your best interests at heart. And the guys at Marathon do? I do. She'll fire me if anything happens. Oh, she won't. She will. <laughs> she'll put him down and she'll fire me. She's never going to fire you because she has the hots for you. She does not. Oh, don't be naive. Uh, I'm pretty sure she's like married or whatever. Oh, she was asking an awful lot of questions about the nature of our relationship. And what did you tell her? I was purposefully vague. <laughs> Why? Sometimes it's fun to let people dangle. He goes back to the telescope. Holy shit, it's flat bottom. Where? Outside of Shanty, smoking a cigarette. It's not even 7 o'clock and he's at the bar. Oh, it's trivia tonight. So? Some people like trivia. Dumb people. I like trivia sometimes. You do not like trivia. So, sometimes it can be fun. You win stuff. Free beer and buffalo wings? What do you have against buffalo wings? <laughs> <laughs> You're not serious. Why not? For like a minute. Pop in, pop out. You have a renewed interest in him? No. Well, I tell you, he's down there, and suddenly you... The you girls know. from work have a team. I thought you hated the girls from work. I'm trying to play nice. Why? So someone will take my shifts this weekend? Fuck. Uh, don't hate me. Don't make me. I have to spend a weekend underwater. Why? Uh, were you not listening to anything I just said? Of course I was, but... It's not like I don't want to go, dude. So I... then let's go. What's more important to you, going to Key West for this weekend, or having me around for the long haul? Fine. I'll, I'll make it up to you, I promise. You don't have to make anything up to me. I, I want to. Anything you need. Name it. Can I use your computer to check my email? Where's yours? Back at the trailer. Something wrong with it? Aside from the fact that it's back at the trailer? Is it broken, though? Yours is just nicer. Of course. It's in my bag. You move towards wherever his bag is. Oh, hang on a second. He goes to his bag, takes out the laptop, opens it up. Waits a half second, hits a couple keys, hands it to you. What did you just do? Nothing. You just did something. I closed out a file. What file? Confidential work file. Bullshit. <laughs> it's not. Dude. What? Why are you lying to me? I'm not. <laughs> you are, I can totally tell. You're being paranoid. Please tell me that stupid bitch did not email she you. She didn't. If I find out you're lying to me. What, I'm, what do you do? I will fucking murder you both. Oh, you're too funny. <laughs> Cell phone ringing in his bedroom. Oh, mine. Tell her I'm coming out there to get her. <laughs> Shut up. A specific squeak, a specific click. This is he. No, that was fine. He continues his conversation with the bedroom door open. You step forward to listen. Then suddenly the dolphin appears, tapping at the glass. You look to the dolphin. You look to the bedroom door. The dolphin taps again. You look at him. The door shuts and then the apartment disappears and you and the dolphin are left alone together. There's the beach ball. You grab it and hold it up so he can see it. He starts tapping at the glass again. You hold the ball right up to the glass. He goes crazy. He wants it. You hide the ball behind your back. He can't see it. He freaks out. He taps the glass again. You keep the ball hidden. You're doing a little dance together. It's sweet and effortless. 
a gentle interspecies flirtation. You're totally yourself with this fish. You've never felt quite so alive and accepted. Then his sounds begin to warp and echo. He knocks against the glass harder. He wants to know where the fuck that ball is. You shrug your shoulders. You're still playing. The dolphin swims away, disappearing from view. You look for him. You wait there for him. You wait. You wait. Then, the dolphin appears as if out of nowhere and slams his entire body into the glass. Darkness. Daylight. The sanctuary. You have a black eye or two. It looks ugly. Mask squeeze. From when? A couple days ago, I did a wreck dive. Let me see. Why? Come here. It's happened to me before. So let me see. You're not a doctor. Why are you acting scared of me? I'm not. Then come over here and let me take a look at your face. You walk up to her, get close enough so she can inspect your eyes. She does. You keep your pupils pointed towards the ceiling. Ain't no blood in there. Should have seen me when it happened. Haven't you been diving long enough to know better? I left my mask behind. The one they gave me was too small. <coughs> what? I called that fucker over at the park. I said you didn't have to do that. He says power's been on and off all week. Yeah, that's what I told you. Now, I know there ain't no gas line going over there, so I figured you've got an electric range. you got an electric range? Yes. So how you been cooking for yourself on an electric range when you ain't got no electricity? I stay elsewhere some days. Where? I have friends. You cooking dinner? I cook us dinner. I eat two. You showering over there also? I stay there. What do you shower when you don't stay there? Here. You can't shower here. Then what's the shower for? It's for a quick rinse for guests after they've been in the mud for a minute, not for like your daily ablution, your legs shaving, what have you. I'll stop showering here. You can always come over and use our shower, you know, got a spare room too. It's real nice. I have a place to stay. What if you didn't? But I do. Okay, look, I'm not going to do anything, but I need you to be honest with me. Okay. He do that to you? I told you how this happened. Yeah, and I don't believe you're that stupid. <laughs> but you think I'm stupid enough to let myself get hit by someone? Now that is not about smarts. I know how to judge character. So do I. You can't judge him based on how he acts in a council meeting. That's an extension of work. Nobody's themselves at work. I am. <laughs> you're yourself everywhere. You say that like it's a bad thing. <laughs> Certainly leaves nothing to the imagination. I think you got me pegged. You think you got him pegged, and I know you a heck of a lot better than you know him. But you're saying if I got to know him a little better, I'd change my opinion. Yes, I think you would. All right, then bring him to trivia. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Why not? Because he hates trivia. You like it. So? So he only lets you do shit he likes to do? <laughs> no. Great. See you tonight. <laughs> The dolphin appears, taps on the glass. This is your fault. Thunder, rain, lights, the apartment, later that night. You're sitting at the kitchen counter. He's soaking wet and dripping water on the floor. I'm so confused. Why? Maybe you shouldn't have been purposefully vague about the nature of our relationship. But even if we were together, why would she think that I'm hitting you? Because she's decided that's the kind of person you are. A violent sociopathic asshole? Yes. <laughs> because I'm not coming out to get drunk at bars, I'm hitting you. I think the perception is that you're just generally... What? Generally what? Hard to know. Well, did you tell her the truth? If I tell her the truth, she'll put him down. Okay, before we get any deeper into this ridiculous conversation, I have got to change into some dry clothes. It's not ridiculous. People around here listen, actually listen to her. You want her running around adding wife beater to the list of character flaws she's keeping on you? <laughs> when did we get married? This isn't a joke. You go grab his laptop. Look, I'm always in your corner. You know that, right? You're not talking about me. I put you in touch with the guys at Marathon. Don't forget that. I wouldn't even if you let me. 
Because more than anyone in your life, I champion your attempts to challenge yourself, to become a better you. I know that, and I'm trying. But that dolphin tried to fuck you. That's not what happened. He tried happened. to fuck you and then drown you. It happens in the wild, too, with female divers. I think it might be time to stop playing marine biologist and let him go. You see something on the laptop screen, something that bothers you. Hello? Am I talking to myself? He re-enters, changed, into a sweatshirt and pants. What is this? My computer. On the screen? That is an online dating profile. Yours? Yes. Why? Why what? Does it exist? I'm sorry, did you just go into my bag? Did I answer the question? Because I created it. In order to... Dead that bitch. Oh, no. You told me to pack that shit in a box, put it in the closet. And you decided to do that by trolling the internet for available pussy? What is wrong with you? I'm not trolling for... You know I don't like that word. You're not going to find any quality on here. How do you know that? Because I know it exists within the 25-mile radius of Key Largo, and it's garbage. Well, I expanded my radius. <laughs> to? 75 miles. <laughs> that gets you to, like, Cujo Key and... And Mi Miami. <laughs> there are no quality single women in Miami, either. There are. Mm -hmm. I met one. Do you mean you quote unquote met one as in you exchanged emails? I mean or? I met one in person. When? It wasn't intentional. Um, setting up an online dating profile and then driving 70 miles to Miami to meet someone in person sounds pretty fucking intentional. Why are you getting so angry with me right now? I'm not angry. I'm just trying to make sense of all this. What is there to make sense of? Why did you create this profile? When did you create this profile? After I got back from Seattle. And when did you start chatting with Miami? Well, she has a name. Oh, I'm sure she does. I'm sure she has a few. What the hell is that supposed to so mean? So you've hung out with her twice? More than twice. But don't give me that look. You've been busy the last few weekends, too. Working, which is what I thought you were doing. I was, most of the time. And the rest of the time you were driving up to Miami for your little clandestine six sex rendezvous uh, with me basically not what living was happening. here. And I'm only finding out about it tonight because you forgot to close a browser window? Uh, actually, you found out about it tonight because you used my computer without permission. You gave me permission. Once. I've used it more than once. When I was around. You're around right now. You went into my bag, dude. I didn't think you cared. Well, I do. Well, I'm sorry. I was planning to tell you tonight anyway. <sighs> Convenient. Why? Because she's coming down here. When? So, what? You need me to clear out? I didn't say that. Obviously, I can't be here while you're entertaining her. That's the whole point, dude. I don't know what the fuck that means. It means I want you to get to know her. And? And hopefully like her. Why is that important? I hated the last and one. And that was hard enough with her living on the other side of the continent. <laughs> this is still distant. Not the same. 75, dis 75 miles is distant enough for me. Yeah, but not the same. The light in the apartment changes. Behind you on the deck, a woman appears, backlit by the blazing sun. No. She knocks on the glass three times. He turns and looks at her. Stop. He stands frozen. The woman knocks again three times. The sound lingers. Blackout. Sunset. His apartment. About half an hour later. There's a lot of luggage by the front door now. Like a lot. It's all sort of mingling with all of your stuff. You're seated on the kitchen counter. He's standing before you holding a blue handball. He's changed again out of sweats and into something more presentable. Occasionally, woman will become visible on the terrace behind you pacing back and forth on her cell phone, engaged in a series of obviously stressful conversations. She is conventionally attractive by the standards of our time, which means that she is slim, fit, and has a very pretty face. Her dress is effortlessly artsy, bohemian, chic. Clothes just look good on her. Perhaps she's rocking an exposed <coughs> shoulder and or some accessory that would look absurd on anyone other than her. Mold is no joke. I know about mold. Everyone in South Florida knows about mold. Well, hers is a special circumstance. I'll bet. He throws the ball against the wall. Is this a problem? Yeah, it's a problem. I'm not kicking you out of here tonight. That's not the problem. Though the there problem really I'm talking really about a reason for you to stay here, since there's nothing dick. actually wrong with your trailer. <laughs> there is stuff wrong with my trailer. Uh, yes, in that it's a trailer, but it's not uninhabitable. And her place is. Yep. He throws the ball. She has no friends in Miami. She has friends in Miami. So why can't she stay with them? They're new friends. She hasn't been down here that long. 
You're a new friend. Not the same thing, and you know it. It's been three weeks. A lot has happened in those three weeks. Oh, yeah? You guys reveal all your deepest, darkest fears and secret dreams for the future? Is it impossible for you to be nice? I am always nice. Hmm. Say one nice thing about her. I like her shoes. About her as a person. <laughs> I don't know her as a person. Maybe if you take the opportunity to ask her some questions. I just asked her like a dozen questions. They were all, um, they, that were all ultimately about when she might leave. Jump off the counter and go to the fridge. I don't know what you want from me. This is why I didn't say anything. You didn't say anything because you knew I'd talk you out of no, it. No, I was pretty sure you'd judge me. Rightfully. You pull a pint of Finn and Jerry's out of the freezer, grab a spoon, proceed to eat straight out of the carton. I know it's a little fast. A little? But I'm pretty sure I'm in love with her. Oh my god, you're not in love with her! Yes, I am! <gasps> Have you told her that? Uh, Priceless. I know what I'm feeling, dude. Yeah, fucking hormones. It's not like hormones. <laughs> Does she work? Of course she works. She's gonna commute every day. She's freelance. Freelance what? She's a photographer. So she's an unemployed artist. Lots of artists freelance. Lots of artists find stable partners to live off of, too. I think maybe you're seeing things that aren't there. And I think maybe you're not seeing things that are because you're blinded by pussy. I really, but really wish you'd stop using that word. You know I don't like it. Blinded by snatch. Shut up. <laughs> blinded by clam, beaver, penis fly trap, I've stopped listening. flap, cum dumpster, chasm of doom. I want you to stop talking about her like that. It offends me. She is a person. Is she, though? <laughs> Of course she is. But she kind of feels like a little inauthentic to me. Just a little. You think she's inauthentic? I think she's putting on a show for us, yes. She's nervous. She wants you to like her. I'd like her just fine if she'd stop acting. Well, everyone performs a little bit in the beginning. I don't. Oh, please. I don't. What you see is what you get with me. When we first met, you wouldn't even make I eye totally contact with me. I was a totally different person a year Most ago. Most people would have walked away from that girl and let her stew in her own angry juices angry and find juices. someone easier That's to be right. around. But I didn't do that because I knew it was an act, and what she really wanted was for me to sit down next to you and make you engage. So, is that your act? Lots of charm and big smiles and friendly forced engagement? No, that's actually me. Not according to the Marine Advisory Council. They think you're a douchebag. They're prerogative. Okay, so maybe I should stop working so hard to defend you. Please do. It's entirely unnecessary. Sounds good to me. Woman enters the apartment, flustered. <gasps> he says it's written in the lease, Florida boilerplate or some shit. Oh, he was so condescending. It's legalese, baby. You can always find a way around legalese. How? I don't have a lawyer. You and I will man figure it out together. I can't lose that deposit. It's just money. It's three thousand dollars! Fuck! That's a lot of money. Thank you! <laughs> well, in the grand scheme of things... Oh, in the it? grand scheme of things, to those of us who don't make a lot of money, three thousand dollars is a lot of money, dude. You understand! I, I totally understand as well. Understand. You have a job, babe! You have a steady paycheck coming in every week. Right, so there's nothing for you to worry about. I'm not taking any more money from you. You don't have a choice. You can't force her to take money from you if she doesn't want to take your money, jeez. <sighs> This is really not the entrance I wanted to make into your life. <laughs> so were you living in a house? No, a building. A wooden building? Come, sit down. Come sit with me. It's concrete, I think. That's funny. What? Why? Mold doesn't grow on concrete. It can. Right. More often, though, it grows on organic material where water is present. And perhaps the building is made of both, of both organic and inorganic material. What year was it built? How do I find that out? You don't, because it doesn't matter. If it was built post-Andrew, it's probably a mix of cinder block masonry and concrete, both inorganic building material. I don't know what to tell you, because her apartment definitely has mold. So you saw it? No. I saw it. You, you said it was in the walls. It was in the walls. You smelled it. Oh, that's true. It smelled awful in there. And you've been sick. I've been super sick, nauseous, waking up with these crippling headaches, having terrible nightmares, sleep paralysis even. All classic symptoms of toxic mold exposure. <sighs> Those are all classic symptoms of a lot of things. Like what? No, they're not. Yeah. Concussion, ear infection, cancer, AIDS, diabetes. Oh, I don't oh have AIDS. I don't have AIDS. AIDS. Or venomous insect bites, stroke. It's not possible. I've been having a stroke for the last year. Is it? It, it is not. I'm just saying perhaps WebMD is not the place to go looking for confirmation that mold exists. Particularly when there's a $3,000 deposit on the line. We didn't go to WebMD, we went to me. 
You grew up in Colorado. You did? No. Yes, you did. Uh, I didn't. I, I didn't grow up there. I, we lived there on and off. For ten years. So what? You think there's no mold in Colorado? There isn't. We, we had mold in the cabin, in the crawl space. The whole time we were living there, they thought I had asthma. We moved, I could breathe again. Maybe it was in your head. It was in the crawl space. And in the cabin <laughs> was made of logs, yes? So? So there you go. There I go what? It's a wooden structure. Dude, stop. You're confusing yourself. No, I'm not. The basis of your argument is that there Colorado is too dry to have mold. A common misconception, and that because I lived in Colorado for some years during my childhood, I must not know what mold smells like. I didn't say you have mold But I have actually lived in a bunch of different places in my life, different cities, different countries even, with different climates and different environmental stressors, so maybe I have more experience with more things than you do. I really don't even fucking care anymore. <laughs> you turn away from them, and you stumble over one of her suitcases. You kick it lightly. Shit! I'm sorry, my stuff is everywhere. It's fine, leave it. No, it, it's totally in the way! I said leave it. She's moving out tomorrow morning anyway, so there will be no shortage of space. Cell phone rings from the bedroom. Oh, mine. He walks off to get it. Um. Hello? Hold on. He slams the door shut, hard. You look towards the bedroom. Woman looks around at all the other stuff, as if noticing it for the first time. Wait, so you live here? Yeah. Because what he told me is that you stay here. Sometimes. What's the difference? Well, if you stay here, you're just visiting. If you live here, this is your home. I've never paid rent. Maybe that's the distinction he's making. Does that matter? For some of us. OK, so I guess maybe I misunderstood. Yeah, I'm sure it was all a big misunderstanding. You walk towards the bedroom door. I would not have brought all this stuff, I swear to you. You put an ear to it. What are you doing? Nothing. He emerges from the bedroom. I uh, gotta go over to the office for a minute. Why? A minor fire to put out. Oh yeah, what kind of fire? The minor kind. How long will you be? Hopefully not too long. Hopefully? I'll text you if I get held up. What's that? Work. Yeah, but who at work? Back off. Is everything okay, baby? Everything's fine. You promise? I promise. You promise, you promise. We're not allowed to worry anymore, okay? Okay, I'll try. Don't just try, do it. See you in a bit. Text me. The exits. Woman goes to the couch. She finds Squishy. She picks him up. She holds him. <laughs> He's so awesome. Yeah. He's the best. <laughs> you shouldn't let him do that to you. Like, instruct you not to worry. Oh, no, it's fine. He's right. I worry entirely too much about absolutely nothing. It's not nothing, though. <laughs> What's not nothing? That phone call, him running out of here. Uh-huh. It doesn't bother you? He'll be back. You sit down next to her. It would bother me if I was dating him. And he was still talking to his ex. I would be bothered by that. <coughs> oh, um, uh-huh. But you're not? Nope. <laughs> Come on. That doesn't bother me. I guess you're more evolved than I am. I guess so. <laughs> then again, I know the whole story. I don't think that's who was on the phone. Of course it is. He wouldn't have shut the door otherwise. He shuts the door for work calls at my place. I'm sorry I shouldn't have said anything. So why did you? I just don't think it's fair. You care about what's fair to me? Of course. So you're not just like trying to freak me out so I'll leave? Why would I do that? Because you don't want me here. I'm thrilled that you're here. Even though my being here means you have to go? He wasn't serious about me leaving. Sounded serious. Yeah, he's not. We'll just clean out the weight room and I'll move in there. He lifts weights? <laughs> no. <laughs> so why does he have a weight room? There's other stuff in there too. A bunch of boxes and junk. Woman stands and walks to the other door. I thought this already was your room. Nope. Wait room. So where have you been sleeping? Out here. He has a whole other bedroom and you're sleeping out here? He just didn't have time to clear it out. So you sleep on the couch? Yep. Not in there with him? God, no. King size bed. I, I'm not the one you need to worry about. I'm not worried about anything. You look worried. That's just what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I'm serious. I have a very hard time managing stress. I'm not like you or him, just like always in control. He's not always in control, trust me, especially when it comes to her. It's not her. How quickly did he run out of here? Yes, it was a hasty departure, but he was 
still totally collected, totally calm. And that doesn't make you a little nervous. No, it's one of the reasons I dig him so much. His overwhelming calm makes me feel overwhelmingly calm. His lack of stress helps me to see my own stress as something I can conquer. Uncle Bo wanders onto the terrace. She's holding a bottle of beer in a koozie and smoking a cigarette. She peers in, doesn't see you. He has a very soothing influence on me. When he's around, I feel like I can breathe. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'm sorry. Oh my God. What? Oh, this is not happening now. Woman gets up and runs into the bathroom. Ooh. I see you move around in there! You run to the front door and lock it as Uncle Bo takes one last drag of her cigarette and flicks it off the terrace. A male voice calls from below. She up there? <laughs> yeah, she's here. You need me? Not sure yet. Hang on a sec. I'm happy to come. I there. said hang out a sec. I'll let you know. <laughs> she tries the front door. <clears throat> Are you fucking kidding me? You can't just show up here like this. And yet here I stand. On private property. So call the cops. You know all the I cops. I know all the cops. <laughs> and the guy who owns this building. Let me in. What's happening up there? Bitch, I said I'd let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Who's down there? My cousin. Why is he here? Same reason I'm here. I still don't know why you're Trivia here. Trivia starts at 7 and goes till 10. Oh, so you're just planning on being fashionably late? Yes. She need me to come up there. No! Where is he? I don't know. Here she goes with the lies again. Let me in. Woman emerges from the bathroom holding her pants in her hands. Who is that? Cousteau's girlfriend. Oh my His god! Girlfriend. Yes. Oh my god, I am why she so her pants embarrassed. Her I think she might have peed herself. Woman runs off into the bedroom. Yeah, you can go. I don't want to go. We don't need you. <laughs> Maybe I can just get go out of here. Me. Fine, but will you tell her something for me? Do I look like your goddamn wingman? You want to tell her something? Be a grown person. Pick up the phone and call the woman. Now go. You shouldn't have told him to call me. Oh, you're right. He is an idiot. You shouldn't have told him to call me. No law says you got to pick up. I didn't. Well, I don't want him to think he has a chance. Then maybe you should tell him that. I did tell him that. With words. That's not how this shit works Sister, anymore. I did not come here to get a tutorial on how you assholes date these days. I just wanted to make sure you're okay. I'm fine. Woman pokes her head out from the bedroom. Do you have a pair of pants I can borrow? Everything of his is swimming on me. Isn't this all your clothing? Would you like to go through it for me while I stand here half naked dripping urine on the floor? Why are you still dripping? Because there's something really wrong with me, okay? <laughs> Uncle Bo taps on the glass again. Softer this time. You unlock the door and step away from it. Bo enters. You move towards her stuff. I'm sure anything of mine will be swimming on you too. We're the same size. You fling a pair of shorts at her. Ow! Sorry. Hey there. Hi. Pissed your pants, huh? <laughs> I did. It happens. To children. And people who've been drinking. We haven't been drinking. We're about to start. Perfect timing. There's no booze here. There is booze here. It's in my luggage. Woman goes into the bedroom. You sit, hold squishy. So, why does she have luggage? Why do you think she's moving in? Uh-huh. You need a place to stay then? No, for the last time I don't need a place to stay. Stop asking. Oh, you're going to stay here with the two of them? Yes. OK. What are you doing? Sitting. Why? Because I'm old. If you're here when he gets back, he's going to lose his shit. Don't you live here? Yes. Well, so you can't have friends ever? Yes. So then what's the problem? <laughs> oh, I get it. Mm, took you long enough. Rude, but I get it. Woman re-enters and goes to her luggage. She finds two bottles of wine, brings them to the kitchen counter. There's no corkscrew in here. <clears throat> They're screw top. <laughs> Classy. They're putting really good wine in screw top <laughs> bottles now, actually. She's right. What do you know about wine? I know about a lot of things you don't know I know about. Where are the glasses? I don't want any. Yes, she does. No, she doesn't. You have to have a glass with us. I don't have to do anything. We're going to make a toast, and you can't toast with water. It's bad luck. I'm sorry, but what are we toasting? New friends and interesting adventures. You 
Got a good attitude, despite crap circumstances. Thank you, I try. What the hell are you doing dating this joker? I don't think he's the joker. Where are you moving from? Miami. There you go. Herbert doesn't admit jokers. I don't, I don't even know what that is. Are you being serious? No, she's being an asshole. And watch your mouth. <laughs> uh, we're not at work. You bust in here uninvited, I can say whatever the hell I want to. I am still your elder. Yeah, you're a wonderful role model and a fantastic influence. I am both of those things to the people who want me to be. You were ready to put your fist through that window. Luckily, I didn't have to do that because you let me in. Woman brings Uncle Bo a glass of wine. From here on out, there is a continuance of drinking, draining, and refilling glasses. Thank you, sweetheart. Don't call her that. Why not? Because she's not your girlfriend. I don't mind. Will you clear something up for me, sweetheart? Sure. Because, see... For the longest time, I thought she was his girlfriend. Why? Why did you think that? Because that's what she led me to believe. No, I didn't. You assumed. Never corrected me. Because my personal life is none of your business. Now I show up here and learn that you are, in fact, his girlfriend. I am. That is who I am. For how long exactly? About a month? A little less than three weeks. And you're moving in here after a month. Why? I have mold. No, you don't. Yes, I do. You don't. It's a con just a convenient excuse to move in and let him take care of you. Well, so, maybe. What is wrong with that? Fucking everything. That's partnership. <coughs> That's one person sucking off the, uh, one, another person's teat. I will contribute. <laughs> with all the money you make as a freelance photographer? Yes, eventually. You paying rent? I pay my way, in my own way. I am not that woman. You certainly look like that woman, from the waist up anyway. Does he have a job that pays well? Yes. And provide a certain level of stability? Yes. A job that maybe can provide me with a certain level of stability? Sure. But I also have mold. Both can be true. You have to see mold. You have to see it. For you to be having the symptoms you're having, it's, if it's making you that sick, you'd have to see it. Well, you ain't seen it? He saw it. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. He told me he did. He's looking for a convenient excuse, too. You're both just fucking looking for ways to justify a bad decision. The last, like, three guys I dated have been on food stamps. I moved five different times in three years. I just want to stay put for a minute. So maybe start making better life choices? That is what I am trying to do! <laughs> How old are you? Thirty-one. It's your Saturn return. That's supposed to stop like at 28. Nah, you can feel the effects well into your early 30s. <laughs> oh my god, really? Really. <gasps> Thank you for telling me that. Don't mention it. What the f hell are you guys talking about? Saturn return? But what is it? It's when Saturn returns to the same place in the sky where it was when you were born. It happens in your late 20s. And it makes you date losers and move around a lot? It just kicks up a lot of shit. Forces big changes, demands a taking stock of one's life. Conveniently, at exact, at like exactly the age that most people are doing that anyway. You don't believe in astrology? No, I don't believe in fake things. It's not fake. It's a symbolic language. Does he know you believe in astrology? It's okay to have different interests. We're not talking about different interests. We're talking about different fucking core beliefs in how the world operates. I like the differences. I think that they're complementary. <laughs> Yeah, they always are until the chemicals wear off and then it's just another reason to fucking hate each other. How romantic. You have to know that on some level. Sure, I'm not an idiot. So then why are you here? On some level, I also think this is a good decision. Letting him take care of you. I don't see it. I don't see that as such a bad thing. It is a bad thing. A very, very bad thing. It's only a bad thing in this case because he is a fucking dirtbag. No, he's not. Uncle Bo reaches into her back pocket and pulls out her phone. She hands it to woman. <laughs> what the hell is that? That is what happens when a diver doesn't properly equalize the air pressure inside their mask. Does that look like what she's got going on? No. No, it doesn't. What she's got are two black eyes from getting hit in the face. Please just stop. You owe it to her to come clean before she gets in any deeper with this motherfucker. Do you think he did that? I do. Why? Because
because she's insane. Because a year ago, this one here was a completely different person. Yeah, a shitty drunk person. No, you were a sweet, fun-loving person. I was fun-loving because I was drunk all the time. She stopped <laughs> drinking because he told her to. I stopped drinking because it was bad for me and I was making bad decisions. He's got you all fucked up and turned around to the point you don't even know who the hell you are anymore and I want that shit to stop. He did not do this to me. I did it to me. Oh, would you walk into that door? No. I got into the tank last weekend after you told me not to. Bullshit. It's not. I deliberately disobeyed you. I don't believe you. Of course you don't, because everybody else in this town always does exactly what you say and fall all over themselves trying to please you and repay you for all the fucking favors you do them. But I don't owe you shit. Not loyalty, not obedience. You are not my family. Uh-huh. You get up and walk away. So the dolphin did that to you? Yes. How? He was upset, acting out, throwing himself up against the glass. I thought I could help him calm down, so I got in. It didn't work. It had the opposite effect. In fact, I got hit and he came after me with a giant... Erect penis? <laughs> yes. That's your story. That's what happened. <laughs> you realize what this means. Uh-huh. And you're okay with that. Why wouldn't I be? Because you love that animal? I feed him. I clean up after him. I play with him. Okay. I'll do it in the morning. Awesome. Ten o'clock. I'll be in bed. Woman stands. Excuse me. Jesus Christ, again? Be nice. They're my shorts! Woman removes the shorts and throws them at you. <laughs> then she goes upstage to her luggage. Oh, this smells like mold. Like, everything I own smells like mold no, now. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does! She starts crying. This is what I'm talking about. Shut about. up. Are you okay, sweetheart? No. She gets up and goes into his bedroom. You want to talk about it? No. I don't know. Yes. Give me a minute. Woman comes back into the living room. Now changed into some same pair of sweats that he was in earlier that night. I want to ask you something, and I would really appreciate it if you would tell me the truth. Are you talking to me? Have you slept with him? What did he say? I already told you I'm not the one you should be worried about. Well, you are, so answer the question. What did he say? that nothing has ever happened between the two of you. You don't believe him? Stop evading and answer her question. Why do you care? Doing it again. <laughs> Why are we even talking about him still? I mean, Jesus, can't we go 20 minutes without? I don't think you can. You want a bet? I'll take that bet, sure. No, <laughs> not until she answers my question. Why should I? Because if you answer my question, I will tell you who, who called him tonight. I know who called him tonight. It was not her. And I know it for a fact. There are things he has told me that he hasn't told you. There's nothing he hasn't told me. He hasn't told you about OSHA. And I know that because he asked me not to mention it to you. <laughs> if there's something going on with OSHA, I don't want to hear about it from you. I do. <laughs> he filed a workplace safety complaint. Against whom? The university. He wouldn't do that. That's fucking absurd. He absolutely would do it if he don't want to take any kind of responsibility for what happened. Well, it wasn't his fault. My goodness me, you are fucking delusional. Maybe he's lying to her. Or maybe, just maybe, he's lying to everyone. About everything, all the time. Yeah, fine, we slept together once. Like a year ago, we took a day trip to Key West. Honestly, I don't even think it counts as sex. We never actually had intercourse. Not the only way to find sex. Whatever we had, it was a total failure, so you can rest assured that I am no threat to you. Was he drunk? He doesn't get drunk, even Key West. We spent most of the day walking around the NOAA Eco Discovery Center. There's a replica of the habitat there so that people can wander in and experience, if only for a moment, the wonder of life under the sea. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. Took a couple of pictures at the south, southernmost buoy and had dinner at Margaritaville. And then we went back to the hotel and it happened. Or didn't happen, whatever. The next morning we got into his car and drove home in silence. There'd been an accident on the seven mile bridge, camper overturned, we bumper to bumper the whole time. It ended up taking us five and a half hours. That was fun. <laughs> After a moment, you walk to the kitchen cabinet, grab a glass out of it, pour yourself a glass of wine, you linger over it for a minute. 20 minutes? We could try for 15 if you like. <laughs> I say let's go half an hour. Ooh, somebody's getting cocky now. I want to play too. Are we allowed to say his name? For the next 30 minutes, that motherfucker doesn't even exist. Fine. Start the clock. Blackout. A few hours later, you are on the couch, alone. Woman is not on stage. You're doing something mindless on your phone. He appears on the terrace and then enters. Sorry, that took way longer than I thought it was going to. It's okay. Where is she? Asleep. Asleep? It's 11 o'clock. She passed out like half an hour ago. Passed out as in? She brought wine. He comes over to the couch. Are you drunk? No. But you drank. Yeah, I had a glass. How was that? Nice. Huh. Interesting. You wanted me to get to know her. And? I got to know her. He and, sits. And what's wrong with her? What do you mean? You were drinking. People tend to get real authentic when they're drinking, so I'm wondering if she revealed anything about herself that you think I should know. Nope. Nothing about herself. She did reveal something interesting about you, though. Me? Yep. What? She told me about OSHA. I was advised not to talk about it. You talked about it with her. Well, I didn't want you to freak out. Why would you think well, that would freak me you. out? Because I know you. I know how you get. How do I get? Well, I was planning on telling you as soon as everything was resolved. But why didn't you just go to the university? I did. A dozen times in the last year, and I consistently shot down my ideas. Someone died, which I warned them was going to happen. The community tried to scapegoat me, and they weren't doing anything about it. I didn't feel like I had much of a chance. Now what? Oh. There's going to be an inspection, possible fines. They might shut down diving for a month or two. And you get fired. They can't fire me. There are laws. I'm sure they'll make your. I'm sure they'll be happy to make your life miserable until you quit on your own. Others have tried and failed before them. Yeah, but that was just people, townies. They were touch, talking about a major university. It's a state school, dude. Let's not be ridiculous. So, these last couple of weeks, the phone calls, the emails. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't like lying to you. So it wasn't Seattle. Jesus Christ, when are you going to stop? What was I supposed to think? When I repeatedly told you that it wasn't her, I don't know, perhaps you could have believed me. I just don't understand why you didn't tell me about this earlier. You haven't been making me feel like I want to confide in you much recently. Obviously. I don't like that. Neither do I. I want to be able to tell you stuff. So tell me stuff. Don't yell at me. Things just used to be so easy with you, and then you started getting all... What? All what? All paranoid and, and crazy. Jealous. I'm jealous? Well, you're not jealous of her. No. Dude. I'm not. Well, it's okay if you are. But I'm not. I need you to be honest with me. About what? How you feel. I can't keep doing this with you. I feel fine. About me. You finally realize how close you are to each other. You know how I feel about you. No, I don't. You're my best friend, and I care about you a lot. You think she's right for me? I think she fits the profile. Do you like her? Does it? Doesn't matter. It matters to me. You give a, a lot of thought to the kind of guys I should date. I do. <laughs> really? Yeah, your happiness matters to me. And so, who do you think I should be with? He almost touches you. Sometimes. But then he doesn't. Because he looks up and sees Uncle Bo's beer and koozie sitting on the coffee table. <laughs> what is that? What? That. His beer in a koozie? Yours? No. Hers? No. Was somebody else here? Yeah, my boss came over for a bit. Your boss? When I didn't show up for trivia. Why did she come here? 
She knows we're friends. And this is the first place she thinks to look? I basically live here. But you don't. All my stuff's here. You're, you don't pay rent here, do you? No, I don't. So then this isn't your place. I guess not technically. Then maybe you shouldn't be inviting random people in for drinks when I'm not around. She's not random. Oh, really? No, she's known me since I was like 12. It's the kind of shit that makes me lie to you. He exits into the bedroom. After a moment, you get into your little couch bed, <coughs> turn onto your side, snuggled up with Squishy. You can hear their muffled voices from within the bedroom. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. How do you want it? And then they start fucking. Mm -hmm. It begins slowly enough, softly enough. Their sex sounds get louder, oh. more intense. Oh. Now you can hear the headboard oh. banging against the wall. <laughs> it's hardcore banging, a wall-shaking banging. It sounds like the walls might come down around her. Oh. Woman starts to make noises indicating oh. that she's enjoying herself. Oh. You lie here, curled around yeah. your woman. Oh. Now you hear him, oh. louder than before, yeah. grunting and yelling and maybe even making sounds oh. out of simple words. He grunts and oh. moans and words oh. and repeat as a keyboard oh. continues to bang against the wall. Oh. Her screams of pleasure oh. are muffled. Oh. Oh. Like he's got his hand over her mouth. Oh. times again. You wait. Nothing. You wait. Nothing. You pound on the tank. Nothing. 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 Morning. Uncle Bo enters sees you, standing by the tank, still in your PJs. Stops. You turn around and look at her. It's 8 o'clock. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. Where is he? You look exhausted. I am exhausted. I didn't sleep at all last night. So, at around 7.30, I figured if I'm not going to get any sleep, I might as well drive over here. So I got up. I got dressed. I got <coughs> in my car. I stopped at Waffle House even because I needed coffee. And it was like, oh, 7.45. So I got my coffee and I got an egg and cheese. And I sat out there in the parking lot drinking coffee and eating my egg sandwich until about 7.56. And then I got out of the car and I locked it and I let myself in and I walked over here to that little tank and here I am and where is he? You said you weren't coming. Yeah, I said that before I knew I wasn't going to be able to sleep and anyway I didn't mean it. I'm sorry I didn't realize that. You've known me for 15 years and somehow you don't know me well enough to know when I'm full of shit. I got a call at six from one of the cleaning ladies calling to say that he was just, he was just lying down there, down at the bottom of the tank, not moving. So he was already dead when you got here? No, he wasn't dead. He wasn't dead. He just wasn't moving. They do that sometimes. When they're about ready to die. Which they do. you decided was this morning. Well, he decided. Oh yeah? Did he tell you that? It was time. That it wasn't time because you said 10 o'clock. I'm sorry. 
sorry, Sarah. That is not okay. I'm sorry. You can't just say one thing and then do another thing. You're right. I should have called you. You should have waited. I made a mistake. You feel a sob coming on. And so you decide to just hold your breath. She takes a step towards you. Come on now, sweetheart. When are you going to stop doing this to yourself? You do everything possible not to cry. You hold your breath. You close your eyes real tight. You cover your face. You bend over and put your head between your knees. You shake your head as though you can shake the sadness out of yourself. No! reveal his apartment later that morning. You walk into the apartment to find all of woman's luggage gone, and in its place, a small, partially packed duffel bag. Hello? He comes out of his bedroom holding a little pile of folded clothing. Thought you'd left. I did. I came back. See you. Where is she? About 70 miles north of here by now. I guess she wanted her security deposit. So she's not moving in? No, that was, as you know, a stupid idea. So, you going up there? We broke up, dude. I broke up with her. And why are you packing? Wherever you are, you find Squishy. I'm going out of town for a couple of days. Where are you going? She called me. I didn't initiate. To talk about what? She's been very depressed. About what? She's just a depressed person. Did she know you were dating someone new? Probably. How? I don't know. Facebook? You said I was being paranoid. You were. Obviously not. She called yesterday. It's not like I've been lying about this for very long. It doesn't matter how long you've been lying about it. You stood here in this room last night and told me I was acting crazy. Well, you were. No, I was not. You are now. I'm mad at you. For what? For everything. I seriously can't believe you're doing this. What? Making this about you. It is about me. She threatened to kill herself. I don't care. How can you say that? Because I don't care about her. Do you care about me? She's not going to kill herself. You don't know that. If she was going to kill herself, she'd be dead already. But that's not what she wants. What she wants is you on a plane going out there to her, and that's what she's getting. You mean to tell me that if I called you... From where? The next room? If I called you and told you I was suicidal... You are suicidal. It's a fucking weekend! No, it's not. I think I'm gonna what? Say, stay there? Stay out there? What reason do you have to come back? I have a life here. You have a job here for the moment. Nobody's taking my job away. Okay, fine. So you keep your job. You have no friends other than me. I don't think you have any friends anywhere, and you don't seem to have any interest in making friends. No, now you have a, no girlfriend here anymore either, so what is keeping you tethered to this place? You're being a real bitch right now. You used to like that about me. Not anymore. Fine, then I guess I'll go. What are you talking about? You don't want to be friends anymore. That's not what I said. Then cancel the trip. I can't do that. Sure you can. O okay, I don't want to do that. Okay, then I won't be here when you get back. Well, that's pretty fucking selfish. I guess being likable is suddenly not a priority to me either. Oh, it's never been a priority to you. You begin to move towards your stuff. If it was, you'd try a little harder. Present yourself a little better, maybe. Oh, well, this is me. Whatever you're currently holding, he grabs it from you and throws it aside. He advances on you. I want you to stop doing this. I want you to stop doing this right now. 
I think it's probably time anyway, don't you? No, I don't. I can't sleep on your couch forever. So I'll move you into the other room. Oh, with the rest of your garbage? Where do you want to go? Back to the trailer, I guess. You can't live in that trailer. Sure I can. There's nothing really wrong with it after all. It's a trailer. Maybe I'll move out of the trailer. Into what? You're going to buy yourself a house down here making ten bucks an hour? That is not your problem to solve. I suppose you could stay with Flatbottom. You're probably right. Or your boss. We both know she'd be happy to have you. You know what? I'll come back and grab this after you're gone. Maybe it won't be here. Maybe it'll be in the fucking canal. Fine. None of it's worth anything anyway. Oh, really? None of it? He's standing by the couch, which is where Squishy is. You spot Squishy. He sees you spot Squishy. You see him see you. You go for the dolphin, but he gets there first. He holds the dolphin up over his head. You look at him. You look deep into his eyes. The stare is penetrating and deep. And you see unidentifiable as anything other than awful, existing within him pre-memory, coming from the darkest part of him, nothing. Blackness, just nothing. It scares you, but you're okay. And then you head for the door. Dude, I, I, I'm just kidding. Here, take it. You pause at the door. You turn and look back at him. He takes a step towards you. He places the squishy on the kitchen counter. You grab squishy. You both stand there for a moment at a safe distance. It's just me. I know. It's just me, dude. I know who you are. You open the sliding glass doors and step out onto the deck. He stands there behind the glass. You look at each other. The sun comes out, and you walk away. Static, sonar, static, silence. End of play. Dolphin to the to the 
to him yeah. and that they were sort of interchangeable yeah. in that sense. That's very interesting. Anybody else have any thoughts? So what so can we narrow it down to talk about him a little bit? What what are you what how does he make you feel? What's your what's your take on him? What 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 do you sense? How would you describe him? How do you respond to him? Does he ring your bell at all? Do you know him? Do you love him? Do you hate him? <laughs>
Dig was funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you see that, that sort of parallel there? A lot of dangling going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's time you should get a chance to meet the playwright of this one for play. Come and join us, Edith. Edith. Tuesday as well, but the, um, I had pitched a different play, uh, entirely different play, plot-wise or story-wise, uh, about a group of, or a, a sort of posse of Christian feminists who teach playmaking to uh, foster care, teenage girls in the foster care system. Um, I work with um, a program called Playmaking for Girls with a theater company in Atlanta um, called Synchronicity. Um, which is a female-focused uh, theater company, and we have this awesome program where we do uh, monthly theater-making classes for girls in Atlanta's foster and group home system, and also teenage girls in the refugee populations and the refugee resettlement uh, programs there in Atlanta. And it's this amazing program that I've been really lucky to work with, and I wanted to write a play based on those experiences and then I didn't. Um, <laughs> I showed up here on the first uh, weekend and told Nate and Renee at lunch that I had totally changed my mind and I had started writing something different that just kind of came to me and I couldn't stop. And they were just gonna, they could either kick me out or they were gonna have to live with that play for nine months. And so they opted to live with that play and me for nine months. So I'm really happy about that. Um, and um, a lot of the, I think, things that I wanted to explore in that play are, are actually very much in this play. So I was really interested in looking at trauma from a, a sort of a s interesting perspective. I was really interested in looking at um, sort of a detrimental way that the culture, our culture, uh, raises young girls. Um, and obviously I'm working with, with Synchronicity, working with a heavily traumatized population. Um, so uh, they are a really specific group of girls, and what I sort of love, hate about them is that they make it really difficult to get close to them. And so um, if you stick it out, though, with them, um, they start to trust you, and you can really uh, make amazing things happen, and sort of they learn that they have stories inside of them that are important to tell, and um, that they're important people in the world. And so working with them was just a great, it was a great experience because you do feel a little bit like you're banging your head against the wall. And so um, that was a character that I wanted to put on stage, a character that is sort of playing active, um, sort of actively repelling as a way of um, actively getting. Like people who don't know how to just say, hey, I love you, like let's sit down and try to be together, but who instead of that say, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, go away. But what they're really, the subtext of that is like, I'm so terrified to be alone, please love me. Um, and that was a real challenge um, to put that on stage in an active way. So that was one way in. Um, I'd also been reading a lot of books, a lot of Naomi Wolf books this year, and um, the new Peggy Orenstein book, Girls and Sex. And there was a, one of uh, Naomi Wolf's earlier books called Promiscuities and Girls and Sex sort of overlap. And Girls and Sex is about girls and sex, and Promiscuity is about <laughs> girls and sex, but they're about a generation apart. And so it was really interesting to me to see sort of what has and hasn't changed. Uh, in terms of how teenage girls, and, um, young adult, young women are uh, navigating, sort of shifting uh, uh, environment, sexual environment as they grow into adulthood. Um, so I wanted to put those ideas on stage. Um, and then I wanted to write an erotic thriller. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so I started, I watched a lot of them, a lot of the great erotic thrillers of the 80s and 90s and borrowed a lot from all of those movies and um, put a lot of sort of symbols and uh, tropes and archetypes into this play. And uh, the last thing I'll say about that is the thing that I will now talk about at every talkback, hopefully this play will have a life beyond here and hopefully there will be lots of talkbacks and I will bring this up at every single one, I promise. <laughs> is that Renee said in uh, uh, one of the workshops as we were talking about like what an erotic thriller is, and, like what that is as a genre, um, Renee said, something about like the difference between a, a horror movie and a rom-com is the soundtrack. 
and that really, <laughs> really stood, or the score, and that really stuck with me. And so we had the the kind of linchpin scene of this play, which hasn't changed very much, is the scene between you and him, where she discovers the online dating profile. That scene has been almost identical from the from the very beginning, um, and it was always really, really funny. And it felt like a John Hughes movie, you know, or like a sitcom uh, scene. Um, and my plays tend to be very fluid with tone, and I've started thinking that's just sort of how I write, and it may not be a, may not be a, something that I need to fix. Um, and so uh, the the erotic thrillers. Um, so I watched all of those erotic thrillers and realized how close the tropes are um, in both of those genres of movies. And so I wanted to kind of put something on stage that would be um, sometimes very funny and sometimes very dark, uh, and kind of put the audience really in. Um, a, a protagonist's uh, mind as she had to navigate uh, some pretty difficult uh, circumstances, interpersonal circumstances, um, and, and put a difficult, quote unquote, difficult uh, female character, young female character, um, as your way into that this story. Yeah. Well, I, how did you get from, from that to incorporating the idea of this relationship with an animal, and, uh, and, and specifically this dolphin, yeah. which is, um, really a lovely image. I think everyone kind of responded a lot to that, the, somehow that connection with, with and, the dolphin. And the dolphin has stayed. I mean, there have been yeah. a lot of things that have come and gone in this play as the drafts have evolved. Um, but everybody always basically said, like, if you keep one thing, keep the dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> the dolphin is the play. So um, I, the dolphin, I, I think the, the very beginning writing of this play happened because I had an image, uh, the image of the sort of stage picture image in my mind of the very first scene, which was these two people hit, uh, throwing this ball back and forth with each other in this apartment. I knew it was in Key Largo. I knew, I know the apartment. Uh, I sort of knew who they were, and I knew that the, the female character worked with dolphins. Um, and I didn't really know much else. Yeah. Um, I lived in Miami for four years. I spent a fair amount of time in the Keys. Uh, I knew some people who worked um, in uh, these jobs. Uh, and so once I knew who they were, I knew yeah. that there was a dolphin in the play. Yeah. Because our, our relationship, uh, you know, girls who like dolphins, that's a real category of people. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, girls who like horses. Yeah, exactly. There's something sort of romantic about them somehow because they're so smart. Cool. Uh, all right, so your turn now. Sorry, I was monopolizing. Um, <laughs> what kind of questions would you like to ask of Edith or comments or uh, illuminations that you'd be interested in? Yeah? What, what are some of these erotic thriller tropes that you feel like you, it's not a genre I watch a lot of, yeah. so what did you get in there that people will recognize? The telescope. Fun. There's a lot of obsessive watching in these movies, and there are quite a few telescopes in some of them. Um, or other ways of, of uh, voyeuristically watching other people, like the, the, the movie Sliver with Sharon Stone and one of the Baldwins, I think it's Steven. I don't want to give away the ending, but there is um, some high-tech watching of, the in, of an entire building complex that's happening in that. Um, the, the movie that I think I borrowed and was inspired the most by is Brian De Palma's Body Double, which has an amazing telescopic voyeurism uh, thing that happens. Um, you should rent it and watch it uh, immediately. It's like one of my favorite movies of all time now. Uh, one of the other things that I, I found really interesting that was pointed out to, um, to me by a friend of mine in a writer's group that I'm in in Atlanta really early on, and it was one of the reasons that I started watching all of these movies was that these movies um, always tend to have a um, gender non-conforming or um, sort of psychotic homosexual character in them, um, or a um, dangerous queer character in them. That's one of the tropes in all of these movies. Um, and the queer character is normally either this sort of psychotic uh, antagonist or an easily disposable um, friend, uh, a helper character who then can be killed off uh, as, at any point in the plot, depending on what the plot needs are. Um, and uh, there's some film theory that's, you know, really articulates better than I can that a lot of these movies, these movies emerged sort of at the height of the AIDS crisis um, in America, and um, that uh, there is a heavy emphasis on blaming sexually empowered women and um, non-gender conforming others, other characters as being the, uh, the reason why the protagonists who are primarily male are um, sort of falling off the deep end. Um, and these characters are often um, 
out of their minds, particularly the, the female characters or either these sociopathic narcissistic characters who want to just put a, you know, a, knife, a knife pick in your throat for no reason or want to drive a car up a cliff or are pissed off that you're having sex with their girlfriend and want to drive a car up a cliff. I mean, they're just like, there are a lot of really interesting um, statements on uh, sort of empowered non-traditional sexuality mm -hmm. in those movies. And so um, Uncle Bo was always in this play and then a friend of mine said, you should watch these movies because she is an archetype in those movies. Um, and then a lot of the evolution of the play was figuring out a way to make her a fully fleshed out character with an arc and a reason to be there and a relationship with the main character so that she wasn't just a, a plot device. Yeah, I was gonna say, of the, of the way the play evolved, bringing Bo more yeah. and more into the story definitely yeah. uh, happened. Yes. Yeah, always um, really Yeah, what else? We learn a lot about the setup and who the characters are through the narrative of the narrator. Yeah. I was just wondering, in your mind, when the play evolves into its final form, Will the audience still, will that information still be revealed somehow to the audience? Or, I mean, because that was a lot of stuff that we got. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Um, and some of it is, a, it's a bit of a gimmick from my perspective. It's a way of getting um, people who are not women who might be reading scripts for theaters to hopefully identify with the main character in a way that they would not otherwise, which was the choice of putting the stage directions in second person as well. So it's just like, it's a, tr it's a trick that I'm like hoping will work. Um, it might not, but I, I, it's been in the play for so long that I just wouldn't change it at this point. So it's really, I also, I teach playwriting and I teach contemporary drama and script analysis. And um, I find that people don't, uh, my students have a, who, who are not theater majors tend to have a really difficult time reading plays. They read plays as if they're literary. Um, and not as though they're blueprints. And so this is also a way for me to hope, I was just like, I'm gonna write this play for my students who maybe um, have read some um, Choose Your Own Adventures. In life. <laughs> um, and so it really is just a way of the, the, the manuscript becoming sort of a piece of literature in addition to being a blueprint for a, a fully staged uh, piece of theater that lives in three dimensions. But you would imagine that in the program. In the program it would, it would say, say you, him, and yeah, it would, the, the characters would so say So they would at least get right. that hint. Uh, some of the other playwrights were saying that they had the opportunity to work with the cast as they went yeah. through. Did you have that too? Well, um, Jen and Rachel were both in very early, uh, very early drafts of the play, and then they went away. <laughs> <laughs> um, these two lovely human beings just came on for the workshop now. I think I saw a different him every single time that we worked yeah. on the play, and then uh, we had lovely Britt back there sitting in the back row who read you um, for a really long time as well. Um, but we had quite a few different yous as well. I just um, and and quite a few Uncle Bows, uh, different Uncle Bows. Um, it, it, I really wasn't set on these characters for a really long time, so it was it was really helpful for me to hear a bunch of different voices every single time I came in. So did it solidify then toward the yeah, I think I probably got real with it uh, in April, uh, the month that I didn't come down in April and I just sort of like socked myself away. Um, I had a reading in Atlanta with to a totally different cast um, and did, and that was like a really condensed workshop uh, a couple of days. I wrote, then we did a reading, we had a couple more days of rehearsal and then uh, reread it. And then um, from that point on, everything was is basically set. And I did a little bit of writing in the room with these guys as well. Um, and then I did a complete revision uh, after the Tuesday reading, <laughs> which I didn't give to them because it would have been a jerky thing to do. <laughs> and so now there's another version of the play that, um, that uh, yeah, that was that was based off of a lot of the comments from the Tuesday talk back. Oh, now we want to hear that what one did too. You <laughs> did you then kill Uncle Bo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cast in Atlanta, the cast in Nashville, all these Uncle Bows, yeah. can't, they can't get to New York. No, to LA, because you're going to film it in LA. <laughs> it's okay, gonna, okay, it's gonna, okay, who, you're asking me this question. I know. Yeah, who, who would you My cast? celebrity you Uncle Bo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Celebrity Uncle Bo. Rachel. And unfortunately, you can't make it. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I don't. Or would you, would you pick a celebrity? Uh, no, probably not. I mean, like, 
Yeah, no, I don't, I've had I've a, I've had to wrestle with this question a lot because it's casting wise, it's been an interesting it's been an interesting challenge, and I was not sure who she was for so long. Well, um, would, would it have to be a woman? Yes. Yeah, yeah that mm -hmm. actually somebody brought that up at one point over the process of like having a man play her, and that just did not sit well with me. Um, because she's not a man, she's a, she's a woman, and she presents in a really specific way. Um, so yeah, I, but I, I don't know. Yeah, probably, so, uh, hopefully, you know, somebody who like nobody knows because there aren't a lot of parts, there aren't a lot of parts like this. And mm -hmm. so um, it's always been really important to me that if you're gonna put um, three women on stage that they be representative of a whole spectrum of uh, femaleness, femininity. Mm -hmm. We're almost out of time. Does anybody have a burning question you must ask before we part company? We want to know over here. So what changed? Oh. Uh, nothing major, like nothing structural. The shape of the play is still the same. It was just a, some clarification questions that people asked that I thought, oh, you know, that's right. I probably do need to make that clearer sooner. Um, so nothing that would be, I don't even know that if we if we now sat here and heard the new draft, if y'all would be like, oh, wow, she made a bunch of changes. Yeah, to me. Yeah. yeah, there it's a lot of just internal changes inside the same. Thank you so much for your help. I can't tell you how great